Armed persons have attacked a Geda community in Bungudu local government area of Zamfara State, killing its traditional ruler, Umaru Bawan Allah, and three other residents. The Secretary of Bungudu Emirate Council, Usman Ahmed, said the attackers invaded the community and unleashed mayhem on the residents. The attack has come barely three months after the Emir of Bungudu, Hassan Atahiru, was kidnapped along the Kaduna Abuja Highway in September. He spent 32 days in captivity before he was released. The Bungudu Emir is considered a higher rank than the traditional ruler of Ogeda. Attacks by terror groups on communities in Zamfara have become rampant, with hundreds of people killed or kidnapped in 2021. Apart from Zamfara, other northwest states that witnessed similar attacks are Sokoto, Kitsina and Kaduna. The attacks have continued despite the heavy deployment of security operatives to the area. According to a report, the traditional ruler, Umaru Bawan Allah, has since been buried according to Islamic rights. Well, joining us live to discuss this is the Commissioner for Information Zamfara State, Ibrahim Dosara. Also joining us with him is the security expert, Dr. Kabir Adamu. Dr. Kabir um, Adamu is also the MD of Beacon Consultant Limited, a security outfit. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Plus News Now. Um, thank you, um, Maureen. Stephen's <laughs> greetings. I wish you the same. Uh, very sad thing uh, happening in your state. Okay, um, I'm not from Zamfara State. Um, in a neighboring, I come from a neighboring state, uh, but yet very sad. sad yeah. As a Nigerian, I feel really, really bad about this development. Now, so so many things are happening in Zamfara. So many killings and kidnappings. Um, how would you? What would you attribute this to? Um, it's a failure of governance, and frankly, we can go around this topic, uh, uh, but that's, that's the issue. Um, there is a, a constitutional mandate, section 14, subsection 2 of the constitution mandates the government to protect um, the lives and property of every citizen, and where there is a failure of that, um, I mean, the responsibility lies squarely. On, on, on government and um, its government is a spectrum. It includes the federal, it includes the states, and to an extent the local the local government. Um, they have one primary responsibility, which is to protect us. And in this instance, we are seeing the failure repeatedly. The the issue in Zamfara uh, started as far back as 2012, and we're in 2021, about which is the year is about to end. And frankly, we haven't seen any major reduction in terms of the frequency of the fatality as well as the uh, threat factors. We're speaking about bandits that are raiding uh, villages and that are killing people, uh, frankly, with the, an impunity that I have not seen. Would, would you describe it as a case of a neglected crisis, Zamfara State, a case of it's neglected it. crisis? Um, I wouldn't really call it neglected in the sense that um, government has, uh, you know, attempted to address the issue. In particular, this current government, uh, when it came in, it set up a committee. The committee submitted a report with far-reaching recommendation. I wish the commissioner was available to tell us why that... Well, just hold, hold your thought there. I think we've got him back online. Hello, Mr. Commissioner. Are you online now? Yes, I'm on the line. Good evening to you. Sorry? Good evening to you and welcome to the news. Thank you so much. The security expert well, was just saying that he wished you were available to answer this question, which I threw at him. Is Zamfara case, uh, the situation in Zamfara, a case of uh, neglected crisis because it's been going on for some time? You come again? The situation, the insecurity in Zamfara State, so many people killed, so many people kidnapped. And as he has said, a security expert that he is, that not much has been done. And I asked him, is it a case of neglected uh, crisis? Do you share that? No, 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 no. You know, the issue of uh, insecurity is inherited by this administration. And uh, the issue of insecurity started b back to 2011, uh, where there was crisis between farmers and herders, which transformed uh, into the, the crisis 
between Vigilante Group and Fulanese. And that degenerated also to the current situation. Uh, the government of the day, when it came, it tried to make sure that uh, there was reconciliation between the Fulani and the Ansakai, uh, who uh, are fighting each other. And uh, at the initial stage, the government succeeded. Zamfara spent over a year with total peace, without anybody being kidnapped, anybody being killed, or anybody being intimidated by the bandits. But because of the conflict entrepreneurs, politicians, and saboteurs tried as much as possible to engineer the stepping back of the uh, peace process between the NSAK and the Fulani. And that is what is related to the present situation. It was the reason why His Excellency gave the bandits an ultimatum for them to re-embrace the peace process and then continue. But unfortunately, uh, some of them did not. And that was why the governor decided to introduce what we term as the Zamfara model of uh, state of emergency. Shutting down the um, telecommunications network, uh, preventing sending uh, uh, of uh, fuel on Jericho, preventing of black marketing, preventing of uh, rural areas where bandits used to come to buy fuel, uh, ban such sending of fuel in those areas, as well as transportation of food and livestock, and also closing down the market. And I can tell you that those measures has, um, have helped very seriously and very significantly. And then uh, this, and then this. Uh, so what does that speak of this success you're talking about from those measures? Because a monarch yeah, has been I'm killed along with other you, people. I'm just trying to show you how the government of the day has been trying its best to make sure that uh, the issue of insecurity is in the state is tackled. And uh, I can tell you the significant uh, result has been yielded as a result of the series of steps being taken by the government in dealing with the situation. All right. And uh, uh, from the reports we've gotten, uh, this very attack, uh, the bandits spent hours rubbing from one house to another, undisturbed. Is there any no, form of organized assistance case. of or security being provided to the people in these communities? No, that, that wasn't the case. Uh, honestly, when the report was had, there was a team, a combined team of military officers, including Air Force with, with aircraft, bombarding the area, dispatching the hoodlums, and also rescuing 10 people, including one year old baby uh, who were uh, kidnapped by the bandits. Unfortunately, the house of the monarch was set ablaze, and the monarch was killed along with four other people. Have any arrests been made? Well, presently, the police and the other security agencies are making frantic efforts to ensure that uh, they arrest the hoodlums. And as I'm speaking to you now, a team of the military combined with those of the police and the civil defense are in the forest, combing the whole area trying to make arrests of those people that uh, perpetrated the act. Okay. All right. Please stay on the line while we go back to Dr. Kabiru. Kabiru, are you still there? Yes, I am, Maureen. All right. Well, in recent times, the North has been in the news, insecurity almost on a daily, uh, and several hashtags have sprung up, such as hashtag North is bleeding, hashtag secure the North. What do we have in our hands? From your position as a security expert, what do we have in our hands in the northern part of Nigeria? Um, in, in simple terms, we have non-state actors, um, specifically armed groups, that are challenging 
the supremacy of um, the state, uh, both at the federal and at the state level. And they've, they've successfully challenged that supremacy. Um, like I said, that of Zamfara started in um, as far back as 2012 and almost eight years down the road, it's still ongoing. If you look at the Northeast, it's been ongoing for almost 12 years. Uh, we have um, a counter-terrorism operation that has been implemented there with a full-fledged um, army division. In fact, two army divisions um, in the Northeast that are trying to you know, contain and um, eradicate that, that, that terrorism. Um, so on all of this, all the, the same issue, non-state actors challenging the supremacy of the state. Now, the human index, development index in the North is one key element. Poverty, on um, illiteracy, uh, socioeconomic grievances. Um, Commissioner Ibrahim Dosara mentioned the relationship between um, Fulanese, Hadas, and you know, farmers, Fulanese, and, and Hausas and how that has contributed to the situation in, in Zamfara. There are several other factors, including mining and its contribution, uh, the proximity of the state to Niger, and how that is allowing the influx of weapons across the border, um, drug addiction, and several other factors. In a nutshell, these are the kind of circumstances that have allowed the growth of these non-state actors and their ability. I, I, one factor that I forgot to mention, which is critical, is the existence of um, so-called ungoverned spaces. These are forested areas that are huge and that so far we haven't been able to dominate and deny that they are used by these non-state actors. This is where they, 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 they hibernate. This is where, when they abduct people, they take them to. And um, this is where they are able to operate between states. So they are able to move from Zamfara to Kasina, to Sokoto, to Kebi, and to as far as, as Niger through these ungoverned spaces. Um, so yeah, that's the north for you, unfortunately. Yeah, would you say that the government is overwhelmed with the situation in the north? Because you just identified these areas where they hibernate, where they keep their victims. And you also mentioned the paucity of the, you know, uh, uh, the borders, which has been a major problem. Our borders are very porous. Would you say that uh, the government of the day is overwhelmed? Or the government, not be, even before this government, why have we no, not I been able to secure our borders all these years, all these decades? Why, why are we finding ourselves in this situation today where we are suffering because our borders are so porous, enemies are bringing stuff in and out to hurt Nigerians? I, I think it's an element of um, lack of accountability or, you know, the, it, it, it's at a very low um, level uh, where, I mean, think about it. We, we're, we're discussing the mother of, 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 of um, a traditional ruler that is well respected. Um, I will bet you, and, you know, I'm willing to put some money in it, uh, nobody's going to be punished for, for that. No government... Um, official is going to be accountable for this debt, and that that is the issue. So I don't, I wouldn't use the word overwhelmed. Rather, I think it's because the level of accountability is really, really low. We are not seeing the, the because of the nature of the northern states, where you know the media is not very active. The level of um, relationship between government and the people is at a very low level. Um, I mean, if this was to happen in a south southern state. I, I bet you um, there will be at least some level of accountability because the media will put bigger pressure. The civil society organizations will put, take actions. And so before you know it, government will be forced to take certain actions. But it happens in the North, day in, day out, and nobody is being punished for it. Okay. So maybe let's, not overwhelmed, let's bring in but the, the they, commissioner. That, that lack of accountability. Commissioner for Information. Yes, please. Lack of accountability. Is your government guilty of that? You see, the issue of armed banditry and the insecurity generally in northwestern Nigeria is quite different from that of the northeastern Nigeria. They have different peculiarities. But one thing I can tell you, this present administration of the Amphara State has been pushing so hard to make sure that this issue of banditry is over. Recently, 
His Excellency the Governor Abdullah Mohammed Matualem Maradun was in Niger Republic to ensure that this issue you are talking about of the porosity of the border is tackled. And it was as a result that Turuji, the most notorious bandit Timpi, was attacked. His uh, weapon stores, his food stores, and all other areas belonging to Turuji were destroyed by military operations that took place about two weeks ago. So, and if you compare with the um, present administration and the previous ones, the, there is significant uh, improvement in terms of killings. Because before, the hardly a day passes without getting 200, 100 people killed within the week. But today, we have uh, reduced it to uh, merely kidnapping and in some places attacking and killing, right? So um, I can tell you that the government of Zamfara State, uh, under the leadership of His Excellency Bello Mohammed Matola Maradun, has been doing everything uh, possible to make sure that the protection of life and property has been given priority in Zamfara State. Okay, uh, just uh, because time is not on our side, this issue of securing the borders, you said you went to Niger to, you know, with regards to that, what was achieved? Are we having better uh, borders now, better secured? So, of course, very well. There was uh, synergy between Nigerian government and the Nigerian government in terms of securing the border. And that is why the military is getting it easy now to operate within the border side especially the, the forest that uh, links Nigeria and Niger Republic, which is the hideout of the major notorious kingpins and their guns. All right. Um, Many of them are now moving towards uh, other places, um, like uh, the southern part of the country. Every day now in Zampara State, you see the bandits passing with their animals and their families moving out of the state to other areas, which is a sign that the synergy between the Niger and Nigerian government is working perfectly. All right. Uh, time would not allow us to continue with this discussion. But on a final note, uh, Dr. Kabir, what would you suggest, what advice would you give to the government? Well, I talked about accountability. I think um, that's something that needs to be looked at closely. Unfortunately, it's beyond the state government to do that. It's actually um, the mandate of the federal government because let's remember that um, security is still in, on the exclusive list. Mm -hmm. So there's very little that um, the state government can do in terms Even of Even though they call it security uh, 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 vote. Vote, vote? Yeah. Um, so that they, they, they can also emulate Lagos State and set up the um, the uh, what what I would call now Zamfara State Security Trust Fund, just like Lagos has Lagos has the Lagos State Security Trust Fund, so that there is a transparent system for managing um, security where all of these funds, including the security vote, is used in a very functional manner. Then they also need to involve the people in in within the security architecture. Um, the people that don't feel protected, and I say this with all sense of responsibility, um, Ibrahim Dozara is my friend. Um, I, the, the best example of this is the number of protests that we are seeing in Zamfara. Just earlier in the week, um, somewhere near Chafi, there was a protest by residents, mainly because they felt they had been attacked and the kind of response they wanted was not um, adequate. So the, the, it's very important that whatever security arrangement involves the people so that the people feel they are, they are protected. And then lastly, um, there must be a framework uh, by the federal government with the support and involvement of the, all the state governments, not just Zamfara, but all the state governments that are affected, Sokoto, Kibi, um, Kaduna, Niger, Katsina. Um, must be part of that arrangement where uh, the same measures that um, Ibrahim Dosara mentioned, including Nijar, 
and to an extent Cameroon and Chad in a cross-border arrangement as well as a coordinated action against this, all of these ongoing right. cases. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kabir Adamu. Dr. Kabir Adamu is the MD of Beacon Consultant Limited, a security outfit. Thank you for your time. And we also thank, thank you, you. Uh, Commissioner for Information, Zampara State, Ibrahim Dosan. Thank, thank you so much. And we wish you the best as you tackle uh, this challenge in your state. Thank you so much. Even though you did not ask me my advice as well, well, I had to ask a security expert to advise you, the government, and well, I thought that the, would the suffice. The aspect also need advice, because uh, like in Zampara State, there is acute shortage of manpower in the area of security. We need more military men, we need more police, we need more civil defense officers to work in Zampara State. Uh, and again, there is shortage of um, old, uh, lack of very much financial support to the government. So the federal government needs to give a lot of finance to the state government to ensure that uh, all the needed uh, facilities of the military are being supplied without delay. Okay, well, I, I hope that the government, I believe the government is listening and uh, we hope to see uh, an improvement in that regard. Thank you so much for your time again. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.